Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net, and this beginner acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a fun, I call it moonlight margarita with acrylics on canvas. So I'll be using an 11 by 14 inch canvas for this and a three quarter inch flat brush, as well as the colors Thala Blue, Brilliant Purple, and Titanium White. All the colors I'll be using and the other brush and all the materials I'll be using are listed in the description of this video. And if you're viewing this tutorial online in the, um, the instructions of the tutorial. So I already dipped my brush in the water and loaded it into the phthalo blue. We're going to call this dark blue from now on. I'm going to do a gradient blend. I'm painting the background first and I call this a gradient blend because we have three different colors kind of merging together in the background so the top part of our sky is the darkest part and this is all going to be that dark blue color so I am painting left and right strokes using that color and I'm going to go a good amount down the canvas I'll be going about a third of the way down and so just applying the phthalo blue left and right strokes getting it all filled up nice and solid. You're gonna add a teeny bit of water to your brush if you wanna have that blue flow a little bit better. When you get to about a third of the way down the canvas, you want to grab some of that brilliant purple. That's that light purple that we have on our palette. And I didn't rinse my brush off. I just grabbed a whole, a big chunk of it on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to apply it below the blue. And I'm going to do left and right strokes, blending it up into the blue. Now that um, dark blue color is very, very strong. I'm actually going to wipe my brush off here because it just turned the same color. That light purple is not as strong of a color as that phthalo blue color. So wiping that paint off kind of helped. But we want to blend it to uh, a purplish blue color in this area. So I'm just taking that brilliant purple color and blending it up into the blue. This does not have to be a perfect gradient by any means. It's a sky. So a little bit of sunset showing in the sky, a little bit of glowing light along the horizon line if you look at the finished version of it. Um, so we can have streaks of the light purple up into the blue. It's fine. It doesn't have to blend perfectly. But you're going to continue to add that brilliant purple down the canvas to the point where there's not much blue left on the brush and it's just that brilliant purple with a few streaks of blue in there. So we have the, the dark blue at the top, it's blending to the brilliant purple color and in just a little bit here we'll be applying the white to our brush to make a light purple. So I'm about two thirds of the way down the canvas and I'm going to grab white on the tip of my brush, start below the light purple area and gently blend it up into the sky. So when we're blending colors together, you always wanna start below it and then blend up and work a little bit on that transition zone. So the transition zone is where the colors change, shift, and you'll want to just kind of brush over that area several times and that helps to get the colors to blend and shift. So we're going to uh, pretty much fill the rest of the bottom area with this color and it's going to turn to like a light bluish purplish color. I have a few streaks of phthalo blue in there because there's still a little bit of blue residue on my brush. But if that's happening to you, you can always just rinse your brush off dry and then kind of start over. I'm going to load some more of the brilliant purple on my brush and rinse my brush off to get that residual, um, the leftover dark blue that's kind of seeping through my brush still. But I'm going to make the light purple. So I mix a little bit of the brilliant purple with the white and then 
I'm going to just kind of paint the rest of the area down with that light purple color. Stopping at about two to three inches um, because there's going to be a brown table at the bottom so we don't need to paint all the way down. And then I'm just taking that brilliant purple and just kind of painting streaks up into the sky. Like I said earlier, it does not have to be a perfect gradient. It's kind of a dark uh, nighttime scene. You can have streaks of the colors kind of all throughout the sky. Um, what I do want to do is put a, a second coat of our phthalo blue just at the top. Um, I want that part to be super dark especially since there's going to be stars and a moon up there and of course the string lights. It's just going to create some really pretty contrast when this very, very top of the sky is nice and dark. So I'm just taking that phthalo blue, adding it to the top and um, just kind of gently blending it down. I'm not going to do a second coat over this entire um, sky. That would be a little bit too redundant and kind of too much work to do that. So we have our background done and I'm going to go ahead and paint the table next. So I'm going to load my palette with Burnt Umber and Titanium White. You can use any brown for this, but that's just the brown that I grabbed. And we'll be using the, um, we'll be using a straight edge to help define the table line, but I'll also be using my three quarter flat wash brush. So you can estimate about two inches, two to three inches for the table. It may overlap part of your sky and that's okay. In fact, it's probably best that it overlaps the sky a little bit so we don't have any more gap from the white canvas showing through. So I like to use the, the T-square to do the table lines It kind of it's easy to just kind of place on the canvas. You can also use painter's tape or you don't have to use anything. You can just paint a straight line if you want to do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and double load my three quarter wash brush in the burnt umber and the white. So that just means that grabbing the brown and the white at the same time and then do left and right strokes. And when you paint left and right strokes, your brown and white are gonna gently blend together. We're just, we're creating a very, very simple faux wood look. We're not gonna do any grain details on it. Um, just a simple brown and white slightly mixed together. So just um, gently blend them, but don't blend the brown and white all the way. Leave it kind of streaky. If you want a little bit of texture, you can use the tip of your brush to create some lines on the table. But like I said, it doesn't have to be super detailed because the focus of this painting really isn't the wood table. It's all the other um, things that are in the painting. So just fill the bottom area with your brown and white combination and try not to blend it all the way. When you are finished with this step, you're gonna need to let your canvas dry. You can use a hair dryer to dry it real quick or take like a 10, 15 minute break. Come back to it when it is dry. I will be drawing the margarita glass next. So there is a traceable for this tutorial. If you wanna download that and use that, you can certainly welcome to, but I'm gonna draw this. So the stem and the bowl of the margarita are the same height. So I like to, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda of use my hand here to figure out how tall I want my margarita to be. So when you estimate it, you're gonna use your hand to estimate the height of the stem and the height of the bowl. They should be about three to four inches high, doesn't have to be exact, but you wanna just kind of use your fingers to estimate that. And I'm making little marks. So the mark on the bottom is gonna be the bottom part of the stem. And then the middle mark is gonna be where that stem meets the bowl. And the top is gonna to be a how high the bowl is. So um, like I said, they're the same um, distance. And then I can take my T-square 
and go ahead and do a horizontal line. This chalk pencil is not showing up too well on this canvas for some reason. Usually it does a good job, but for some reason this um, particular canvas is not picking up the chalk very well. Anyway, so did the horizontal line for the top part, and then I can sketch the shape of the bowl. So the shape of our margarita bowl kind of goes down a little bit vertical on the left and right, curves inwards, and then there's a curved part that dips down even lower. And that bottom curve part is gonna curve all the way to that mark that you made where that top of the stem will be. And then you can do a vertical line for the stem and down to where you made your mark. And then you can do the base. So the base is kind of like a half circle um, saucer shape. And then above the base is kind of a, a, a circular shape that um, meets that vertical line. And I'll just kind of make it a little bit darker. But then, so when we paint this in, it can always be adjusted later. It's just the drawings are usually a guideline. Then I'm gonna draw the wires for my string light so I kinda know what those are gonna look like and where those are gonna be. I have two uh, strands that meet in to a point in the upper right part of the canvas. And I have one strand that dips down to the lower part of the sky and goes behind the margarita. And I can sketch a crescent moon. I can sketch where, I'm at, where I want my palm tree fronds to be at. So it kind of helps to kind of sketch your composition with the chalk. It helps knowing where you're going and what you're painting in. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'm going to be painting the glass of the margarita first and I'll be using the color titanium white. Freshen that up on my palette and the number four round brush. So I'm going to water it down just slightly so the white turns into kind of an ink consistency. Just enough so that it's flowy but not drippy but not thick to where it's chunky. So just enough where it's going to um, flow when I paint it. So I'm going to do the horizontal line. Notice my line is a little bit higher than the line that I drew because I'm adjusting it just slightly. Wanted it to be a little tad bit taller, so that's what I'm doing there. But I used the ruler to paint that horizontal line, and I'm just basically going to paint over the chalk drawing that I did. Or if you use the traceable, you're just painting over the drawing from the traceable with the white. So really simple, just outlining the shape and if you messed up it's always nice to have like a baby wipe on hand so right there you get a wet wipe or if it's not wet you can dip it in the water and it comes right off so something that you can have on hand when you're painting and you mess up no big deal and then the stem. You can already see that I don't always go over my drawings. I like to adjust them as I go because drawings are just a guideline for the actual painting and sometimes we go in a different direction with it. Um, the stem, the vertical part of the stem has a little bit of thickness. It's not just a line. It's a line that's thicker. So I did like three lines put together to create that thickness. And I'm just going to outline the base. So really simple. And then we're going to um, go on to the next step with that glass. Um, without rinsing my brush, I'm going to load a little bit of the dark blue. That's that thalo blue. And I'm going to loosely, very, very loosely outline the outer part of the glass. So um, outer part of the white. But I'm not going to do a continuous line. It's a line that is going to um, kind of be... I call it loose outlining, but you pick up your brush, you hold it very lightly. It's not a continuous line. It's, um, it picks up, it's not really a dashed line. It's just a thin line that just kind of fades in and out. And so um, for the vertical piece, I did the kind of the outside part of it on the left and the outside part of it on the right. And then the, the base piece, I'm just going to slightly outline that little circle area and then 
the the rest of that saucer shape so it doesn't really matter if your blue is kind of on the outside of the white or on the inside of the white um, just make sure that your blue is loosely outlined so now we have some color in our glass and I'm going to be doing the base. So the base of the glass is kind of a dry brush effect here. I'm gonna start by loading it in some white. And I'm just gonna take that white and on the inner part of it, do kind of a glare. So it's creating that shape in there. And that curved piece, I'm just kind of painting a circular area in that. Then I'm taking that white and doing diagonal strokes that meet in the middle. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of blue on my brush and I'm gonna create more diagonal strokes. So this is dry brush because there's only a little bit of paint on the brush. If it helps, you can get a towel to wipe off the paint and then paint it. Or you can only load a teeny bit of paint on the brush and just hold the brush very, very loosely and lightly. The point is that we want some of that wood from the wood, the table kind of still showing through the base. So when I painted that base in, it is, still showing that brown through, so I'm not painting it in solid. And I'm just erasing some of the residual chalk line marks around the base, and I wanna go ahead and paint a shadow. So the shadow was done with burnt umber, so grab the brown on your brush. I didn't even rinse my brush, I just grabbed the brown and painted a dark brown area just under the base. If it helps, you can water the brown down slightly. So we're gonna move on to the actual drink part of the margarita. And I'll be using the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. Freshen up some titanium white if you need to and load some primary yellow on your palette. So I already mixed that dark green color with the white about equal amounts. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and mix that in there as well. It's gonna create a lime green color. And we're gonna use that as uh, one of the colors for our green margarita color. So I'm just gonna, and this is the three quarter wash brush. I'm just gonna paint the inside of the glass and um, be using mostly strokes going left and right, but they're gonna kind of curve and contour with the shape of the glass. Wipe the brush off and grab just the dark green. So I'm gonna let this dark green mesh and kind of mingle with that light green, um, and I'm gonna not blend it all the way. So I'm gonna let the colors do their thing and blend on the canvas, but not blend it all the way. I'll use the tip of my brush to outline the inner part of it, but don't go over any of the white or that blue um, outline. So just on the inside of it. And contour, it means to just paint in curved areas around the shape. And we don't wanna let the white, the light and the dark mix all the way together. We want them just to kind of um, look unblended. So. I'm just gonna fill this rest, the rest of it up. I can grab some more light green, and if you want your the color to have more light green, you can always um, have a higher proportion of light green to dark green, or if you like the dark green color, you can just do it dark green. It's kind of up to you how you want that to look. And I'm just very gently letting it blend, curved strokes, and notice the top, um, the, there's a, a horizontal line at the top, the, the liquid doesn't go all the way to the top of the rim. There's a little bit of a gap right there at the top. Um, and then, so when you're done filling your drink in, we have to let that dry before we do any glass or glare or anything. I went ahead and rinsed my water out because it was all muddy. Um, and we're gonna do the salt on the rim next. So I'm gonna load my palette with titanium white and I'll be using the number four round brush. Grab a little bit of white on the tip, actually a good chunk of white on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to just paint little chunks of salt along the rim. So these are little dots, but they're kind of um, dots that uh, form kind of a square shape almost. So they're not little dots, big chunky dot strokes. And then we're just gonna cluster them all along the rim of our glass. Thank you. 
if you want a little bit of variety in this color, you can grab a little bit of phthalo blue on your brush and just do little dots of blue in there. That'll create some shadowing and some color variation in your white. It's not gonna make much of a difference, but just enough of a subtle difference for the salt. And so we got a salted rim now and we're going to do the glare next. So make sure the green liquid is for the most part dry. If it's really wet, this won't um, be very effective, what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna paint some glare on the glass, um, very similar to how we did the bottom um, base part of it. But I'm gonna use the round brush and the titanium white. And I'm just going to just kind of randomly do some curved marks on the left and the right, some random horizontal marks at the top, maybe some random curved marks at the bottom. Be expressive about it. This is not, um, I'm holding my brush very lightly, so I'm not pressing super, super firm for this glare. If it helps, you can wipe off some of the paint on your brush so you know that your marks are gonna be dry and feathery. You don't want these strokes to be thick and chunky. Um, we're not trying to cover up the green. We're just trying to make it look like the glass has a little bit of fun glare to it. It also helps to make it look like that liquid is inside of our glass and a few more fun bright white glare marks on the base and the stem. Then I'll be demonstrating the lime next. So this is really fun. Four round brush and the green. And then in the upper right area, I'm gonna do a circle that um, goes around the, I guess we're gonna just call that the corner. And it stops, so there's my circle. Eventually we'll have it go look through the glass, but we're just gonna focus on this part for now. Make that rim a little bit darker. And then gonna make that lime green color again. Grabbing some yellow, whatever green's left on my brush, grabbing some white, and I'm just gonna fill that in solid. So we have our lime green color. Then I'm gonna wipe my brush off and do more of the details on the inside of the lime. So freshen up more of that darker green, grab a little bit of dark green on the tip of my brush. Just gonna re-outline the rim here. But I'm gonna do the lines that are inside the lime. So starting from the center, kind of like a wagon wheel. So just doing diagonal strokes going around in a radial circular direction. They don't have to go all the way to the rim, but or they can stop kind of, or you can make them go all the way to the rim, it's up to you. And then, so I'm gonna just finish that circle so it's showing through the glass a little bit so I extended that rim but I didn't I stopped at the glass so the glass is in front of the lime and the lime is kind of in the back and so I finished that and then I want to rinse my brush off and grab some uh, titanium white on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to go ahead and use that white to do more of the lines, but also circle, um, paint the circle part. So the inner part of the rim, inner part of the circle, and then do more of the wagon wheel lines from the center, just dragging the stroke quickly outwards, not trying to cover up the green, but just adding another um, color in there. Makes it look more like our line. And then we have a full lime shape on the table. So I'm gonna use the green to outline and create the shape of the lime. So we got the um, two sort of rounded notches on both sides and it's a rounded shape. And then when you fill it in solid, you can use a combination of the dark green and the light green. So just paint it in, let the colors kind of blend together and uh, mix and do their thing. Grabbing more of that white will help to brighten it up, especially if you want the top to look a little bit more highlighty at the top. So um, a bunch of light green at the top and just kind of let it blend with the rest of the green towards the bottom. And then we have 
a lime slice and on the left side. So this is the same thing as that circle line, the same kind of steps, um, only it's, it's half a circle. So starting with the darker green for the outer part of the rim, and then the lighter lime green in the middle. And then you'll do your lines after that. So um, grabbing that darker green to do the lines. I'm gonna outline the rim here again. And let's do the lighter color for the lines. So grabbing some of that white, starting at the top and um, you're gonna wanna do diagonal lines going in that wagon wheel direction, but it's only half a half a wagon wheel and then do the white to outline the inner part of the half circle. Then I'm going to wipe the brush off and grab the burnt umber color to do the shadow. So same thing as we did earlier with the glass. So just a little bit of brown on the brush, left and right sort of zigzag sh um, strokes to create the shadowy area under each of the lines. Next you'll want to load your palette in um, with some Mars black and rinse your brush off. We're gonna paint the wires for the string lights next. And I'll be using that number four round brush. So I'm gonna slightly water down my black to kind of an ink consistency so that when I paint these lines, they'll be flowy and thin. So we're gonna load our brush, twist it a little bit to get that paint right there on the tip of the brush. And so I already drew my lines with the chalk earlier. If you didn't, you can estimate it or you can draw it with the chalk first to kind of figure out where you want your, your lights to be hanging. Um, basically, just paint a very thin black line going across to, um, to paint the wires. So these two string light wires are gonna meet in the, um, to a point in the upper right area of the canvas. And then the other strand is lower in the sky. So this one is going to go start kind of in the middle of the canvas and it's gonna go down behind the glass and to just above the table line. Then we're gonna paint each of the light sockets. So get your black on your round brush. And um, this step is a little tedious if you have your light sockets too close together. So I would say about two fingers spaced apart. If you don't wanna paint as many lights, you can space them even further apart. You can space them three fingers apart. Um, but you wanna just kind of make them evenly. So all I'm doing is just painting a little uh, mark with the, the brush, little square mark shape, um, evenly spaced apart across the, stre the, the strand. So I'm just gonna do that for each of the strands. You don't really want the light socket to show through the stem of the glass. So you wanna just kind of put it on the outside, but I did make part of the wire look like it's showing through that stem. So you can do that if you want. And then, so next we're gonna rinse that black off the brush and freshen up some primary yellow on our palette. We're gonna do the actual circle lights next. So um, make sure, I'm gonna grab my blow dryer here really quick. Um, you'll want to make sure the wires and the light sockets are dry. So when you paint your light, the black isn't gonna mix with any of that yellow or white that we'll be using. 
So load your round brush in the yellow and I'll move my hand out of the way here just a second to show you. But you're just basically painting a small circle that is attached to that little light socket. So just kind of start in the middle, paint circular strokes forming the shape of your circle. So they're relatively small circles. If you want to make them bigger, you can. I'd say they're about the a little bit less than the size of your thumbprint. Like if you were to take your finger and press to form a print. Oh, depending on how big your finger is, it's a little bit smaller than that. Um, but you're just going to continue to paint circles on each of these light sockets. And this step does take quite a little bit of time. I will be going silent here for a bit um, while I finish this. So this one real, real quick, um, because it's overlapping, I just did half of it. If you wanted that to look like it was overlapping the other strand, you can do that. So just be careful for the lights that kind of overlap. Or if you have a light socket that's really close to the edge of the canvas, you can just do part of the circle. You don't have to do the full circle. These ones on the bottom, I did make slightly bigger than the ones that are up high. My reasoning was maybe these strand lights are a little bit closer, um, but definitely you don't have to make them bigger. And so this one, we only see half of it. We don't see the rest of it. And I didn't do the yellow going through the stem. I thought that was a little bit too busy, but um, they are slightly bigger, but you don't have to make them slightly bigger. You can make them all the same size if that's more simpler for you. So next I'll be showing you how to make these lights look like they're bright and glowing. Um, first we want to wipe the brush off or rinse and dry and freshen up some titanium white on your palette. So I'm going to grab the white and add white just in the center of our bulbs. And you have the option of taking your finger and smearing that white a little bit. So when you do that, when you take your finger and smear it a little bit, it does make it look like the bulb is glowing, especially if you smear it so the white kind of goes outside of the yellow circle. Um, but if that's too complicated, if you don't want to use your finger to smear, or you don't like, if you think it looks a little bit messy with the glowing thing, you can just do a small white circle inside of the bulb and just by adding that white right in the center is going to make it look like your bulb is glowing and bright. So I'm deciding not to do the smearing thing with my finger for all the bulbs. I kind of like the look of just the white in the middle. So maybe some of them have kind of a glow to them, um, but not all of them. And so I'm just gonna continue this. I'm just gonna continue painting white on the inside of each of my circles. 
and my white's kind of fading out as I get use more paint more of the circles but um, remember um, or don't let don't cover all the yellow so you really want a lot of that yellow still showing it's the white is just in the middle of the bulbs that's where the bright part of the light bulb would be and then if you want you can even go back with another layer of white so you can even add like another white circle on the middle to brighten them up but I'm also going to do a white highlight on each of the light sockets so on the left side of each of those square light sockets I'm just doing a little tiny white uh, line and then I'm going to loosely outline my wire um, so it looks like the wire kind of has some highlight on it too. Very loosely, um, there's not a lot of paint on my brush when I highlight those wires. Um, and that line is not a continuous line at all. It's very, very faded. In fact, we want a lot of that black from the wire still showing. There's still a few more things that we're gonna do. Uh, we still need to do our moon. And I am actually going to make my crescent moon a little bit bigger than what I had originally drew. I'm gonna take a, a cup. This is like a small plastic Dixie cup. The diameter is probably about two inches wide, two to three inches. I'm just gonna use that to trace a circle. And then on the inside of the circle, I'm going to sketch it into a crescent shape. So this is kind of a trick that you can do if you have troubles with crescent shapes. I tend to have troubles doing crescent moon shapes for some reason, but this helps when you trace the circle and then you do the the shape on the inside of the circle. And then if you want, you can erase that extra circle piece. Um, but then you can go ahead and use your round brush and the titanium white and you can go fill that in solid with the white. And then you can get your eraser and erase any leftover line that's showing through. You can also erase any um, leftover lines from any of the drawing around the margarita if you still have that showing. Um, but I'm just gonna do a second coat of white on here real quick. And then we're gonna, or I'm gonna do the stars. So I'm just using my round brush and dots, making little clusters of dots. If you want, you can do constellations, but nothing too fancy. It's just an added little touch up in the sky. Um, you can make some twinkling stars if you want. So you can do a line and diagonal lines, kind of paint a asterisk sort of shape. And then just add it all over the sky. A random highlight on the top of my lime and a little bit on the rim of that one. Next I'm going to do the palm tree silhouette. So using the number four round brush and the Mars black, I'm going to slightly water down that black on the palette and I'm going to go ahead and do the palm tree. So we have one palm frond hanging out over here on the right. So I usually just do the middle line first and then drag my strokes outwards to create the, the rest of the palm leaves. And so I'm gonna demonstrate that again. Middle line, and then each of the palm leaves 
stemming outwards from it. So you just take your brush and you drag it outwards, starting from that line. So each stroke starts at that line and then it drags outwards and then that one. Try not to cover the line because that palm tree piece would not be overlapping that line piece. So if you accidentally paint it over, you can always go back and uh, redo your the rim of the line or lime or something. Um, then I like to do this with a lot of my silhouettes, grabbing some of that white and just loosely adding um, the painting the middle line and just a few of the palm leaves, not all of them, but just enough to make it look like it's kind of glistening and the light that might be hitting it gives it a little bit more depth and interest than if it was solid black. But this is a little extra. If you don't want to highlight your silhouettes, you don't have to. And then over on the left, we have another palm tree branch sticking out. So I'm just going to repeat the same thing. Do my little, my middle line first and then the palm tree leaves that are hanging outwards from it. And then I'll highlight these as well. Our painting is almost finished. There's just a few extra touches that I want to do to this. I have yellow on my four round brush and I'm just kind of touching up some of my bulbs. Um, some of these where I smeared, I lost the shape of my circle. So I'm just going back with the yellow and uh, defining my circle shape again. And then I wanted to add some yellow onto my crescent moon. I really like how this yellow looks against that dark phthalo blue. So adding that yellow in there kind of adds to the extra uh, prettiness of yellow next to blue. I think it balances it out a little bit better when the moon is yellow. I didn't paint it solid yellow, just a few um, strokes of that yellow and a lot of that white is still showing. Um, and then I also took some yellow and I loosely added it to the glass. So assuming some of that light would be hitting the glare on the side of the glass, very loosely, in fact, not even as much as when we did the phthalo blue color, just a few marks of yellow on the outer parts of the glass very, very loosely, um, a very subtle touch to the glass. There might even be a little bit of yellow in the glare, but I didn't want to go too crazy with that. And then the last thing I did was touch up the outer part of my line. I re-outlined it, but then I added a little bit of white to it to give that line, the outer part of the line, a little bit of highlight. So just a touch of white kind of makes that outer part pop a little bit in that dark area. But that is it, my friends. This is the conclusion of how to play, how to paint. Moonlight Margarita. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. A fun one. I love string lights. I thought it would be a fun combination with the margarita glass. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.